Welcome to Holistic Wellness 24-7. In today's video, we're diving into the topic of nine signs you're actually healing emotionally. As, uh, whether you're looking to cleanse, revitalize, or enhance your wellness, you've come to the right place. In this video, we'll pose the question, are you on a journey of emotional healing, but unsure if you're making progress? In this video, we explore the Discover the subtle yet powerful indicators that show your emotional growth and resilience. By the end, you'll have a clear, simple roadmap to improve your well-being step by step. So let's begin. Emotional healing isn't always a straightforward journey. It can feel messy, unpredictable, even like you're moving backward instead of forward. But what if the very struggles you face are signs that you're truly making progress? What if the discomfort is actually a signal that you're finally moving through things, not stuck in them? We hustle for our worthiness by perfecting, pleasing, performing and pretending. But what if true strength is about showing up, letting ourselves be seen and embracing the messy journey of healing? We'll be talking about the moments when you think, damn, this is hard. But what you don't realize is that, damn, this is hard is also brave and worthy and a sign of incredible growth. For a long time, many of us have lived in a place where feeling was dangerous. Maybe it wasn't safe to be angry or vulnerable or to express sadness, so we numbed. We perfected the art of shutting it down, pushing it away, or keeping ourselves so busy we didn't have to feel anything at all. But here's the thing about emotions, they're like the weather. They're going to show up whether we want them to or not. And just like we wouldn't try to outrun a storm, we can't outrun our feelings. Healing begins when we turn towards our emotions with curiosity and compassion when we give ourselves permission to feel the full spectrum, the joy, the grief, the anger, the fear, without judgment. This doesn't mean we become consumed by our emotions or let them control us. It's about recognizing that emotions are data. They're messengers trying to tell us something and sometimes the bravest thing we can do is simply listen. Allowing yourself to feel is like opening a window in a stuffy room. It might feel intense at first, but then the fresh air starts to come in you start to breathe again, you start to heal. And you know what, it's okay to not be okay. It's okay to have days when the grief feels overwhelming, when the anger feels like a tidal wave. Give yourself grace, because on the other side of feeling is healing. Remember that feeling of not being able to say no? Of constantly putting other people's needs before your own? That's not just about being nice. It's often a symptom of a deeper struggle with boundaries. We're afraid of disappointing people, of being rejected, of not being loved if we don't constantly say yes. But here's the truth. Boundaries are not selfish. They are essential for emotional well-being. They are the lines we draw to protect our time, our energy and our emotional space. As you heal, you begin to understand that it's not your job to carry the weight of the world on your shoulders. You start to recognize that no is a complete sentence. You learn to say yes to yourself, even when it means saying no to others. And you know what happens when you start setting boundaries? The people who truly care about you, they'll respect your boundaries. They'll understand that you're not trying to push them away, but rather you're trying to take care of yourself. Setting boundaries can be uncomfortable at first. It can bring up feeling of guilt and fear. But I promise you, the more you practice, the easier it becomes. Boundaries are not about building walls. They're about creating healthy, sustainable connections. For years, maybe you've pushed down the painful memories, the trauma, the things that happened that you just didn't want to think about. It felt easier to pretend they didn't exist, to bury them deep inside and hope they'd just go away. But here's the thing about pain. It doesn't just disappear because we ignore it. It festers, it grows, it takes root in our bodies and our minds, shaping the way we see ourselves and the world around us. Healing requires us to turn towards the difficult experiences, to acknowledge their presence and to understand how they've shaped us. This doesn't mean condoning what happened or minimizing the pain. It's about recognizing that these experiences are a part of our story, but they don't have to define us. Acceptance is not about saying it's okay that this happened. It's about saying this happened, it hurt, and now I'm choosing to move forward. It's about acknowledging the impact these experiences have had on our lives without letting them hold us hostage any longer. 
It's about reclaiming our stories and rewriting the ending. This is hard work and it's okay to ask for help. Remember, you are not alone. How many of us live in a constant state of reaction where every little thing feels like a threat, like a trigger that sends us spiraling? This is often a sign that we're still operating from a place of old wounds, of past hurts that haven't fully healed. But as we heal, something incredible begins to happen. We start to develop a sense of self-awareness and ability to observe our thoughts and feelings without immediately reacting to them. We learn to pause before we speak, to take a breath before we let our emotions get the best of us. We start to recognize the difference between reacting and responding. This doesn't mean we become emotionless robots. It's about developing a sense of emotional intelligence, an ability to understand and manage our emotions in a healthy way. It's about recognizing that we have a choice in how we respond to the world around us. This shift from reactivity to responsiveness is a sign of incredible strength. It means we're no longer letting our past dictate our present. We're choosing to show up in the world with more intention, more compassion and more peace. It's a process and it takes time. But every time you choose to pause, to breathe, to respond instead of react, you're rewiring your brain for healing. If you've ever thought, why am I back here again? I thought I dealt with this. You're not alone. We tend to think of healing as this straight line, this upward trajectory towards wholeness. But the reality is healing is more like a spiral. There will be days when you feel like you're making incredible progress, like you're finally breaking free from the chains of your past. And then there will be days when it feels like you're right back where you started, drowning in the same old pain. This is normal. It's okay. It doesn't mean you're failing. It means you're human. Healing is not about perfection. It's about progress. It's about showing up for yourself, even on the days when it feels impossible. It's about giving yourself grace and compassion, knowing that some days will be harder than others. Remember, you are not defined by your setbacks. You are defined by your resilience, by your willingness to keep going, even when it feels like you're taking one step forward and two steps back. The spiral of healing is not a sign of weakness. It's a sign of life. It means you're growing, you're evolving, you're becoming. For a long time, your comfort zone, as small as it might have felt, was a place of safety. It was familiar, it was predictable, it protected you from the unknown, from the possibility of getting hurt. But healing requires us to step outside of that comfort zone, to venture into the unfamiliar and embrace the unknown. Why? Because growth doesn't happen in the safe spaces. It happens when we're willing to challenge ourselves, to try new things, to risk getting hurt in the pursuit of something more. This could look like anything from trying a new hobby to having a difficult conversation to finally leaving that job that's been sucking the life out of you. It's about saying yes to opportunities that scare you a little, that make you feel a little uncomfortable. Because on the other side of fear is freedom. On the other side of discomfort is growth. And as you start to step outside of your comfort zone, you'll be amazed at what you discover about yourself. You'll discover a strength and a resilience you never knew you had. You'll discover a capacity for joy and love that you never thought possible. So go ahead, take that chance, book that trip, say yes to that date. Life is full of disappointments, it's inevitable. But how we respond to those disappointments can make all the difference in our healing journey. For a long time, disappointments might have sent you spiraling. They might have felt like confirmation that you weren't good enough, that you didn't deserve good things. But as you heal, your perspective begins to shift. You start to see disappointments not as roadblocks, but as redirects. You realize that just because something didn't work out the way you planned, it doesn't mean it wasn't meant to be. You learn to hold your expectations loosely, to embrace the detours and the unexpected turns. And most importantly, you learn to be kind to yourself when things don't go your way. You offer yourself the same grace and compassion you would offer a close friend. Disappointments are a part of life, but they don't have to define you. For so long, the voice inside your head might have been your harshest critic. It told you you weren't good enough, smart enough, pretty enough, successful enough. It reminded you of all your past mistakes, all the ways you'd fallen short. But as you heal, something shifts. You start to make peace with your past. 
You start to forgive yourself for the mistakes you've made, for the choices you regret. You begin to see yourself with more compassion, more understanding, more love. And slowly that inner critic starts to quiet down. It's not that the negative thoughts completely disappear, but they lose their power over you. You're able to recognize them for what they are, just thoughts, and you're able to let them go. This inner peace doesn't mean that life suddenly becomes perfect or that you never experience challenges again. It simply means that you're no longer at war with yourself. Maybe for a long time, asking for help felt like a sign of weakness. It brought up old wounds, old beliefs that you had to do everything on your own, that you couldn't rely on anyone else. But as you heal, you begin to understand that asking for help is not a burden. It's not a sign of weakness, it's a sign of strength. It takes courage to admit that you need support to allow others to see your vulnerability. And here's the thing about vulnerability. It's the birthplace of connection. It's the bridge that allows us to build meaningful relationships with others. When we allow ourselves to be vulnerable, we give others permission to do the same. Healing in isolation is possible, but it's so much more powerful when we allow ourselves to be held by others, to be supported, to be loved through the process. So reach out, ask for help. We've covered a lot of ground today, from allowing ourselves to feel our emotions, to setting boundaries, to welcoming help. These nine signs are not an exhaustive list, but they're a starting point. They're reminders that healing is a journey, not a destination. It's a process of showing up for yourself, even on the hard days, and choosing to believe that you are worthy of love, healing, and wholeness. If any of these signs resonated with you, know that you're making progress even if it doesn't always feel like it. Keep pushing forward, embrace the discomfort and celebrate your growth. If this video helped you, please like, share and subscribe to stay connected with more insights on mental health and self-improvement. Comment below on the sign that spoke to you most and remember, healing is a journey, not a destination.